and welcome to Space. And this month we're talking about health and how research on the International Space Station not only helps us learn more about the human body, but also helps us develop new ways of dealing with common problems like back pain. Let's find out more. Astronauts have an out-of-this-world job. They see sunrise and sunset 16 times a day, and over the weeks and months in orbit, their bodies change inside and out. They lose muscle mass and bone mass, and many aspects of their health are affected. They dedicate themselves to science. We don't go at all for the view or for the beauty of it. We are not uh, tourists. Career astronauts go there only for the science, the technology, and of course for the maintenance on the space station. Berlin is home to some of the most intriguing ongoing studies on astronaut health. Researchers at Charité University Hospital have developed a unique new head-mounted sensor to monitor astronauts' core body temperature. We do want to have the temperature in the brain because the brain is the most important organ, not only for the astronaut, but for everybody. The surprise finding is that astronauts have a higher core body temperature in space than on the ground. Nobody can explain why. It could impact everything they do. The brain is uh, very vulnerable to any changes in, 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 in temperature. Your time of recognition and to follow things, for example, or to make cognitive decisions, they get, uh, you have to have a longer time for it if you are at a higher temperature. As the astronaut study continues, yeah. Professor Gunga is also adapting the head-mounted temperature sensor for users on Earth, ranging from firefighters to post-operation recovery rooms. We need equipment which is non-invasive, which is easy to handle, which is light, which is robust, which is battery-driven. All that stuff is developed in space for the astronaut. All this in preparation for his upcoming space walk. Floating in space may feel like a dream, but it's not without its problems. Over half of astronauts complain of back pain, something many of us can relate to. I certainly felt uh, my, my spine elongating in orbit because the muscles were constantly contracting. And I could feel uh, a lot of pain in my back. Coming back is the opposite. Simply, the, the muscles in the back, the fine muscles around the spine, um, are not as strong coming back because it's really hard to train those muscles. Here at Northumbria University in northern England, researchers are working on that back pain problem. They believe they've found a way to stimulate the muscles around the spine using a converted exercise device. They use ultrasound to watch the muscles in action. So at the moment we've got our participant, Kirsty, she's exercising on our functional readaptive exercise device. We like to shorten that down to Fred. And um, Fred is all about training and recruiting the deep spinal postural muscles. This seemingly simple movement of the hips, legs and feet is actually very tricky to master because the resistance mechanism has been taken out of the machine. Because there is no resistance to movement, as you would see in a normal cross trainer, Kirsty is actually having to work against or generate her own resistance in her legs. So as the front leg tries to fall downwards under gravity, the rear leg has to try and resist that motion of the front leg from falling down. The team now wants to send a similar machine to the ISS for astronauts to test while they're also trying it out with back pain sufferers in Newcastle. So all the work we're doing here on the thread, we hope will also apply to being able to speed up rehabilitation for anybody that has low back pain through sedentary work, poor desk posture, that sort of thing. For two decades, the ISS has been astronauts home in space. A lot of innovation has followed, including in telemedicine, providing healthcare at a distance. Here at ESA's technical heart in the Netherlands, engineer Arno Rung shows us a telemedicine prototype that allows a doctor to direct the space station's ultrasound machine from Earth. The idea is that the astronaut is able to put this tool in position on their body, at the spot where they want to look and get an image. And the doctor remotely uses the joystick to control the movements of the ultrasound and to put it into the position that he needs to get the image he wants. 
point virtual reality. Health-related research in space covers a huge range of areas from cognition exercises to new pharmaceuticals. The astronauts themselves are the perfect combination of volunteer patient and scientific assistant. We know what they eat, we know what exercise they do very accurately, we know their sleep patterns. So because of that, we have a controlled population without the confounding factors that you typically see across a, a general population here on Earth. Of course, space is special, and the same thing that makes astronauts' bones and muscles grow weaker and is responsible for changes to their cells and organs also makes for revealing experiments. There is one thing that it's impossible to eliminate on Earth, and it's the the acceleration towards the center of the Earth, gravity. In orbit, we can create, we can do science uh, removing that specific acceleration. And so, it's, even though it is the same science, the results are always going to be different. Those results teach us a great deal about human physiology, lessons which should filter down to everyone. The technologies that will keep astronauts in good health on missions to Mars will be the technologies that our children and grandchildren will be able to use to stay healthy. Humans may not have evolved for life in orbit, but learning to live there is helping us to stay healthy on Earth. And now to the part of the show in which we take your questions about the universe and put them to the experts using the hashtag AskSpace. And I'm here with Paul McNamara, a physicist at ESA. Paul, we've had a question from Rusty Seller, who'd like to know, is there any proof of a multiverse? And would the laws of physics there be the same? So it's a very good question. Uh, the multiverse is a theory that says we have these multiple bubbles of universes. Uh, and it actually follows on from our own theory of the universe, the Big Bang Theory where we have a period called inflation, where the universe grew exponentially in size, actually faster than the speed of light. And there is a theory that says that was an eternal process, and it's still happening. And every now and again, there's a little blip. And that little blip creates a bubble, and that bubble is a new universe. And so you could have many of these universes happening. That leads me on to another question we had from Dmitro Petukov, who'd like to know, can there be any evidence of the conditions preceding the Big Bang? That's another very good question, and one which, again, there's many scientists are looking at. So we can try to see if inflation is real, and we can do that using something called gravitational waves. We have a mission we're now developing called LISA, uh, the Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, and one of the goals of LISA is to look for these primordial gravitational waves, and then maybe we'll get some information on the original origins of the universe. Thanks very much for that, Paul. Well, you can send your questions to us about the universe using the Ask Space hashtag, and we'll try to answer them. And I'll be back next month with a surfing scientist. See you then.